If Uber is no longer making autonomous vehicles or flying cars, why are they still exploiting Uber drivers? What's the point? That is the facetious question asked in this Jalopnik article, and it's one that I've got a very serious response to. Hey everyone, this is Kevin the Entrepreneur. So Jalopnik, whose work on Uber-related articles we greatly admire here at the Entrepreneur Show, we have discussed them many, many times, asked this kind of facetious question called what's the point of uber exploiting us if it doesn't make flying cars now here's the thing this is the main topic of like a five quick shot series of articles so therefore we don't have to read much to get the whole picture but i and you will see that these are kind of written in jest more than anything however i do think it's a question worth asking because here's the thing i for years have been saying don't get prepared for these autonomous cars not going to happen. Probably not even in my lifetime. Or if it's in my lifetime, it'll be in 20 years, maybe 30 at this point. By that point, I'll be 66. Who knows? Uh, maybe at that point, yeah, maybe a driverless car and a flying car is actually doable. But until then, I mean, geez, we've just perfected the auto brakes and uh, cruise control. Like, seriously, we're gonna, I, I'm kidding, don't write me and don't leave a comment saying that we perfected those years ago. You know what I'm getting at here. But anyway, uh, so really, we've finally just gotten around to the hybrid model, like, so there, better example. So what does Jal Jalapenik say? Well, let's go. It says, first gear, Uber ditches flying cars too. It As they write, Uber gave up on its self-driving car program this week. I can't stress how huge a deal that is for the central lie behind Uber. Basically, that this was the end result, which, you know, we've talked about many times on my show. It was not the end result. They were never going to do it. But continuing. The company's grand thesis of exploiting workers now was to fund replacing them with robots later. Nope. Gave up. Prop 22 won, and the mask is off. Now Uber is ditching its more whimsical flying car operation as well, as the New York Times reports. A day after Uber handed its autonomous car project to Silicon Valley startup, the company is doing the same with an ambitious and money-intensive effort to build flying cars. Uber is handing its flying car project, Uber Elevate, to the air taxi startup Jobby Aviation, the two companies said on Tuesday. Uber will also invest $75 million in Jobby's efforts to build a flying taxi while agreeing to become partners with the startup when the flying car reaches the market. By taking the two technology projects off the books, Uber management, under pressure to make the company profitable, is dumping initiatives that critics said were money pits while focusing on the company's core ride-hailing service and one of the few bright spots in the pandemic, a fast-growing delivery service. Uber recently completed the acquisition of its competitor Postmates, allowing the company to double down on deliveries. And as Jalopnik ends, uh, this particular writer, I should say, I am floored, I am bummed. What's the point of dodging regulations and destroying the profitable and sustainable career of taxi driving if it's not going to fund some quixotic pursuit? All of Uber's money is going to, what, just build extravagant modernist mansions for its executives? pay for their private jets? He might be onto something here. None of that gets me any closer to the Jetsons lame. So as you can see from that final paragraph, and then the rest of this is, you know, other news stories, the guy is surely talking in jest, but the point is well taken. If Uber is not going to be making the autonomous vehicle or the flying car or anything like that, what is the point of exploiting the drivers? After all, Uber sold themselves on the prospect that they were a technology company. They're not a delivery app. They're not a taxi service. They are in the technology business. And then at one point, they were in the payment service. You know, they do a bunch of dopey things to get around regulations like that all the time. But what was the point of, you know, cutting it? Every time they cut a fare, every time they charged an extra fee, every time they did this, they did that... It was said because it was all in pursuit of the future. It was all in pursuit of the future of Uber, which was autonomous cars, flying cars. Well, here's the thing. That future is no longer happening. But here's the thing. Uber has not been profitable for a long time. And one of the key reasons they have not been profitable 
And this is where people got confused. Like, but here's the thing. You're running an app. You're charging money. You're taking the fee. You're not doing a whole lot else. Like, where does the money go except to the executives? And the w main money pit was the autonomous vehicle and the flying cars. Now, here's the thing. If you were a shareholder, you probably got bamboozled by this sales pitch too. Uber is going to have the autonomous vehicle and the flying car. They are going to revolutionize transportation. No, that was probably never the goal. You bought into it thinking that that was going to happen. And it's not going to happen. Now, does that mean you should sell your Uber stock? Well, no, because here's the thing. If you're a shareholder, this change of this change about might actually help you a little bit. Because now, Uber has essentially given up. They have taken their last loss on the flying car and the autonomous vehicles. Now, they are truly doing what everyone thought they were doing this entire time charging exorbitant prices for rideshare. They are now a taxi service, except one that pays the drivers pennies on the dollar and nickels and dimes the customer. And here's the thing. Now that the vaccination is going to be on rollout, people are going to start using Uber and Lyft, in all fairness, a lot more often. So Uber actually tactfully switched gears. They double down on food delivery for the pandemic and when the pandemic's over they will have a bunch of drivers waiting in the wings and a lot of pent-up demand to go places while they do not have an autonomous division to suck them dry which leads me to believe and maybe i don't know if i knew this truthfully because i always wondered what is uber's end game here they just lose money and like what's their end game. These cars aren't going to work. Maybe the end game was that the cars were never going to work. Maybe that's what the end game was. They knew they weren't going to work. They knew they would never get there. So what do they do? Hey, they sell investors on this lie that, you know, we're going to be heading towards the future. We're going to get the autonomous vehicles. Also, this is our justification for cutting the rates of the dri drivers because, hey, guess what? We're going to Cut the rates of the drivers, so that's more money that goes to the autonomous vehicles, and we're all building towards a future. But here's the thing: now that that expense is removed, what do you think they're going to do? You think they're going to restore the cut wages for the drivers? If you believe that, I've got a bridge to sell you, real cheap. It's big, it's golden, it's right outside San Francisco. Trust me, you'll love it. Email me for the inquiries below. But Here's the thing, seriously, there's not going to be any more expenses on the autonomous vehicles or the flying car. So all that money's got to go somewhere and it's going to go into Uber's coffer. And what's it going to do? It's going to show that they are making more money. I don't know if it's going to show if they're making a profit because I don't have access to those books. But even if it doesn't show that they're making profit, especially with recovery from the coronavirus pandemic, you know, finally around the corner and rideshare returning more or less to normal within a year's time, they could easily get there before the end of next year. And before you know it, what does that mean? It shows the stockholders that Uber turned their fortunes around. They used to lose this much money. Now they make this much money, and that will encourage more people to buy their stock. And by the way, their stock is very high now. And of course, over the next couple elections, Uber is going to roll out a Prop 22 to every state. And here's the thing. I know some of you voted yet. Yes, on that, you want to stay independent? Guys, I told you, if Uber wanted it, you should be suspicious of it. And you basically took the only bargaining chip you had to improve Uber at some point, and you gave them exactly what they wanted, and they're going to bring it all across the nation. And under that plan, guess what? They will finally become profitable. You're not going to make any more money. Heck, you're, you're probably going to... They'll probably cut the rates again, as far as we know. And the passengers, they're definitely paying more. I might make a video about that. Haven't decided yet, truth be told. I'm having a lot of fun with some of the other topics. But uh, this uh, this might have been Uber's endgame the entire time. You inflate the budget. You show that you're always losing money. You have to, therefore, cut driver's rates. You have to increase fees. You have to do these things to pay for projects that you know in the long run you are not going to actually see to fruition i mean some of you might say that's a conspiracy theory you know you're probably right it's a total conspiracy theory and yet travis kalanick the previous ceo he put lots of money on the self-driving cars 
while at the same time going to a factory of cars being manufactured and saying to himself, we can't do this. Like, he was kind of admitting, like, yeah, we don't have the means to scale, uh, to build cars on this scale, therefore, you know, we can maybe patent the laser, maybe we can patent the operating system, but we can't patent the cars. We can't make the cars. So we're going to go to other people. And the thing is, the other companies, they, they kind of realize, like, yeah, no, this driverless car thing, it's not going anywhere. It really isn't. I mean, remember a couple of years ago when Google, Google said, hey, we need this to be at level five and we're at level three now? Well, you know, make it sound like, you know, how close they are for Waymo to actually producing these things. Now we are a few years later and hmm, we never seem to get out of the third level. It's almost like the Friends songs. You always feel like your life is stuck in second gear. Well, I guess the autonomous vehicles are just stuck on level five or whatever the heck it is. So I think Uber is actually going to be insanely profitable now. That's something that I never thought I'd say. I think now that they have unloaded those expenses, but they have all the while raised prices on passengers, cut the fares on the drivers, I think you're going to see a much leaner, far more profitable Uber, and stockholders will probably finally be happy with that. So Jalopnik asked sarcastically, what's the point of Uber exploiting if, if it doesn't make flying cars? The point of exploiting us was never about the flying cars. It was never about the autonomous vehicles. It was about patenting their coffers f so that when the day came that they were going to dump these expensive experiments that didn't go anywhere, they would now all of a sudden have a huge um, incoming, well, well, income <laughs> to show that they are maybe finally making money and that will look good for the stockholders and the stockholders will buy more money might make uber a more valuable company and these are the kind of things that ceos like dara khosr shahi are paid to figure out so here's the thing dara khosr shahi he is probably a good ceo if you're uber if you're a driver yeah not so much but then remember He's not your boss. You voted for that. Anyway, I would like to know what you think of this video, what you think of, you know, this article, you know, do you think that was the end game the whole time? Or who knows? Am I just doing a Christmas conspiracy theory? I'd love to know. Comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe, and as always, flame responsibly. Merry Christmas.